starting your day. <laughs> or maybe finishing your day, or completing your day, or filling your day. All those things are just a simple way of saying, put God in it. Because if God isn't in your day, then your day is liable to get way out of control. No, but if God isn't in your day, he may invade it one way or another. I love today's devotionals because though I read them, though I shared them, though I asked God to apply them, I fear that I became more of an object lesson of them than <laughs> using them wisely and obeying them. And isn't that true for you too sometimes that God uses you as an object lesson to demonstrate that what you should have done <laughs> was more what the Word said and what maybe your devotional or evotional spoke to you about than what you actually really did. That's where most people get this idea of how Christians are so either flighty or, or hypocritical or critical or they take function or exception to the fact that being a Christian doesn't make you perfect. It makes you working on allowing God to work in your life so that he can accomplish his will and that sometimes being imperfect is perfect <laughs> because you're demonstrating what not to do. <laughs> uh, it takes time and God wants always for you to take a little time for him. He'd prefer that you walk daily always with him, but sometimes we only have an devotion or a devotion to take and to share with. Follow your heart's desires. Who is the man who reverently fears and worships the Lord? Him shall he teach in the way that he should choose. He himself shall dwell at ease, and his offspring shall inherit the land. Psalm 25, 12 to 13. To enjoy your life, start following the God-given desires of your heart instead of the desires of your flesh. You may need to mature in faith before you tell the di before you can tell the difference between your flesh and your spirit-led desires. One way to tell if you're following a desire of your flesh is that when you step out to do it, you will lose your peace and face a struggle. If it is not of God, you will feel like you are pushing a dead horse uphill. If it is a God-given desire of the Spirit, it will work like a well-oiled machine. It will flow with what I call a holy ease. Start your day right and follow your heart. Seek the Lord and walk with Him. Daily, meditate and consider well. If what you do goes in contradiction to what you know the Word says, you're probably heading in the wrong direction, or you've got an interpretation that you heard from somewhere that you didn't read it for yourself. You know, I think that's a lot of what most people do, is that if they just sat down with God, really, had a long talk, discussed everything that was on their heart, everything they didn't understand, all the questions that they have, I think that we would have less division and issues and more connection one with another. Because you can't get half of what divides us just by reading the Bible. You have to have someone tell you those things and tell you they're there before you would ever find them yourself. So a lot of times I appreciate all the history, the glorious way that God has kept the church from the beginning all the way up until this day and how I appreciate all the men of God that have come before me and all their denominations, their differences, their separations, their way of looking at God and I appreciate each one, believe it or not. I mean, I know that sounds strange, but I see the kernel of truth in most of what all of these men of God have written. And while I appreciate all those, I sometimes think that, you know, sometimes it's easier if you just read it yourself. 
And I think that's what the Jesus movement was all about when we just simply took what it said and ran with it. <laughs> so that may get you into trouble once in a while, but you know what? As long as you're dealing with the Word of God, you can't really get into too much trouble about how you're interpreting it if you're just reading it and doing it. And I think that's what Jesus said was that my sheep hear my voice and they know me and they would not follow the voice of another. So I would that you just simply do less of your, as was shared, less of your fleshy desires to make other people righteous or holy or whatever. And more of the spiritual desires, it says that the disciples of Jesus would be known by the love that they have for one another. Oh, sure, there's differences that, you know, we may want to separate for a time to learn something, but in reality, when we get down to the root core of who we are and who God is, we need to love one another. That's what it is. That's what Jesus did and said. So, I would say... <laughs> you can be a lesson of learning of what to do or you could be an object lesson of what not to do because God's going to use you one way or the other <laughs> and as I've been an object lesson so many times I love it when he makes me a lesson of learning don't you?